Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Strandy. I'm the principal at Wood Middle School, and uh, you are here at our sixth grade math plan information night for uh, um, specifically for incoming sixth grade parents. But if uh, if you are not an incoming sixth grade parent, you're more than welcome to be here as well. Um, buenas noches. Yo soy el director de Wood Middle School, Mike Strandy. Uh, estás aquí para la información de matemáticas de sexto grado. Um, de la, la Escuela Intermedia aquí en West Ham Um I am going to let any families who are Spanish speaking uh, select the translation or the interpretation feature. And Zali Pantoja is going to be our translator. So go ahead and do that right now. Um, para los que quieren escuchar a esta presentación en español, me puedes elegir um, the interpretation in, in la pantalla. So give just a minute. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and let our panelists, our team here, go ahead and introduce themselves. Um, we'll start with our Wood staff. Yeah, and so hello everybody. My name is Joey King and I am the assistant principal here at Wood Middle School. All right, and uh, from Meridian Creek, I am Annika Olson, and I am the principal at Meridian Creek Mil Middle School. Welcome, we're glad to have you here tonight. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to be here tonight. My name is Kenny Eubank, and I'm the assistant principal at Meridian Creek Middle School. Uh, I'm also a former math teacher at Westland High School, so I'm very excited to talk with you about math this evening. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Barb Soison. I'm assistant superintendent, work with curriculum, instruction, assessment, and I work with our middle schools in the school district. And I'm Andrew Kilstrom, and I'm a communications director here at the school district. Thanks for joining us. All right, and thank you all. And, ju and just so you know, if you are a Rosemont or Athey Creek Middle School parents, um, this presentation uh, will be given tomorrow as well by um, those administrators and team, but this will be the same information that um, that they'll be going over. So district wide, you're you're in the right place if if that's what you're here for. So just uh, our agenda as we get started here. Um, also know at the end we will give some time for some Q and A. Um, so we'll go through all of our slides and our information, and then we'll address uh, any questions uh, that people have when we are finished. So agenda tonight again, we're here. Um, to talk about um, middle school math here in Weston Wilsonville School District and specifically some revisions that we have to um, our sixth grade math courses. And there are also some things that we will um, define that are going to stay the same next year uh, as well. So we will cover those items there that you see on the agenda. And let's head on to the next slide and our next presenter. All right, everyone. Um, again, Kenny Eubank from Meridian Creek. Uh, what you are looking at here are the critical areas of study um, in the Common Core State Standards uh, for grades six through eight. This is a large portion, uh, if you're a family that's new to middle school with us um, this year, this is a large portion of what students will be learning in middle school math. There are other components as well, but these are sort of the critical areas identified by uh, the Oregon Department of Education. The aspects I'd like to highlight are the intentional connections between the grade levels. So one example of that would be in sixth grade, you start studying, as you can see, rate and ratio, which then in seventh grade informs understanding of relationships between proportions. And then further on with that same strand of thinking in eighth grade, um, those ratios become rates of change, which allows students to write equations and demonstrate linear relationship understanding. Similar through lines can be found in the areas of statistical reasoning and two and three dimensional geometry as well. Next slide, please. 
All right, this slide, again, for those families who might be new to middle school, lays out our grades six through eight math path. Um, as you can see, um, we've traditionally offered in grade six, a pre-algebra six and a pre-algebra accelerated six. And our new course for next year is our introduction to algebra six course. And you can see that this course provides access to the accelerated curriculum for all of our students that are new um, to middle school, integrating the seventh grade standards that align with grade six topics. The goal is for deeper learning through the integration of these standards and more exposure to algebraic reasoning in grade six, which we believe will better prepare all of our students for success in algebra. Please note that in seventh grade and in eighth grade, the math path remains the same as it has been traditionally. So if you've had students in middle school in the past, nothing is changing in grades seven and eight. All of our students receive uh, instruction in an algebra one course before going to high school. And the traditional highest level of math that they would attain in geometry if they were on the accelerated path, or excuse me, if they were on the accelerated path in math um, would be geometry. And that would be the highest class that they would attain in middle school. And that remains the same. So they would still have access to all the high levels of math class that they can take um, in middle school and beyond, even with this uh, new sixth grade course. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, here you see uh, a portion of our K-8 progression um, through the Common Core standards. And what you see highlighted there are common content standards uh, between both sixth and seventh grade. And as our team of math teachers has come together in planning um, for the units for this new course, um, they have been looking at how these standards and the colored lines around the standards there, um, you can see represent similar topics. So you can see in the blue, um, a student, a sixth grade standard would be to understand ratio concepts and use ratio reasoning to solve problems. Whereas in seventh grade, there is a related standard in that same content area where you analyze proportional relationships and use them to solve real world problems. And so what I hope to highlight in this slide is the integration between sixth and seventh grade, which our teachers in sixth grade have been doing in the accelerated math program for, for years uh, in truth. Um, and again, you know, note that there will be um, increased rigor in this course um, with all students gaining exposure to that algebraic reasoning um, in their sixth grade math course. Um, and so that's, that's some of the uh, details around how the standards will be implemented, uh, but we thought it'd be really helpful to show you an example of what type of math problems students might be engaging in um, in sixth grade math and how teachers might view that as a way to, to uh, integrate both sixth and seventh grade standards in um, a, a course lesson. And uh, my colleague, Mr. King, is going to share with you that math problem. Yeah, so on this side, um, again, giving an opportunity to see what would this look like uh, in action, and a little snapshot of that. So here's uh, an example problem from, um, from this new sixth grade math course. Um, and you can kind of see there that uh, not only with the visual, but then that prompt of based on uh, the, the pizzas and the number of seats there, which of these tables would you want to sit at and why? Um, and so that would be the problem posed to a student. And below that, you can see the, the different standards, kind of like what uh, Mr. Eubank was just talking about, um, that you can see right there listed standards that hit both at the sixth grade and seventh grade level. Um, and this problem, the, the idea around all this is like, again, making um, these, these rigorous standards accessible to everyone. 
and allowing for levels of depth. And so you'll see in the next slide, um, an example of what some student responses could, could be, again, to that prompt, which table do you wanna sit out and why? Now, they're, as they're having to reason through this, um, there's gonna be variability. Um, and that can be really useful for students in, in just imagining the conversations students would be having in, in small groups uh, around this and trying to reason out um, and do some of that mathematical uh, thinking and gaining uh, understanding of, uh, of these concepts, uh, but also again, the depth. And you can see from those student responses there that there is a, a different degree of depth um, from, from students. And then as, you, as we move on to the next slide, um, how to further prompt students and, and some additional questions that can be there and, and helping them, again, gain um, deeper understanding and probing them more. How can they use their, their thinking and extrapolate it out into uh, bigger situations? You can see that bottom prompt um, starting to look at writing equations. Um, towards this and, and utilizing that based off of their understanding. And all of this, again, uh, providing accents for all the students, but there also is the challenge of uh, students being able to engage where they're at and go deeper. Um, and so it's really looking at with this kind of recalibration that uh, we're doing with uh, our sixth grade math and having these accelerated standards in the seventh grade standards uh, embedded in there is it gives the opportunity that with the right problems and the right tasks um, that we can really hit a variety of standards and, and, and challenge all of our students and give all of our students opportunity to be challenged. Um, so again, that's a little bit of an example of seeing some of this um, in action. And so I'm going to pass it off to Miss um, Olson. Thank you, Mr. King. And uh, again, welcome and good evening. So some of you may be asking yourself, why are we making this change? And why this year? Um, when we've experienced so much change already and such an interesting year. Um, but the reality is, as we uh, talked with teachers, understood student experiences, and not only teachers at uh, the mid-level, but at the primary level as well, we understand some key things. Um, one is there is a very, very big difference in experience that students have had um, in the past year. We understand that. Another uh, piece is that when we thought about our typical process in a typical year, we would be communi communicating and collaborating with our fifth grade classroom teachers. And in that collaboration, we would be asking them for recommendations. Our fifth grade teachers weren't for sure that they would have the evidence needed to make a really great choice for all students because we've been living in this pandemic. And as we continue to ponder the possibility of this and how do we truly serve our students best and considered the research, all of the research that was coming out and continues to come out reminds us that we don't, uh, you know, if we're worried about maybe some gaps in students learning, we would not recommend and the research doesn't point to uh, going back and repeating grade levels, but really in talking about a spiral group approach, continuing moving forward in new content and finding those connections as was demonstrated in previous slides. Um, between grade levels and how can you reteach and or rebuild uh, foundational mathematical structures and knowledge as students continue to move forward in their mathematical experience. Next slide, please. So the other thing, uh, as we had an opportunity to think about this uh, decision in a very deep way for the last several months, was considering what we've experienced in the past 12 years. Um, and as many of you may be aware, we have consistently administered um, map testing for our students. 
And what we've learned through that with many years of data to take into consideration is that many of our fifth graders are ready to go beyond grade level standards. We know and we recognize that. We know that it's important for us to continue to uh, really work with and rework algebraic concepts throughout the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade math curriculum. We've known that. And we also uh, know and understand through continued years of conversation with our colleagues at the fifth grade level, um, it's really hard making that jump both from uh, primary school to being a middle school student and making a recommendation about which math a student might be served best in. And so considering those pieces, um, you know, those are all part of the decision-making uh, factor in why would we think to make this change at this time. Next slide, please. So we're hoping we can articulate here um, what some of those changes will be and what things are actually going to stay the same. Uh, all sixth graders will take the same math course. Sixth grade math is a new course with sixth and seventh grade standards, really reminding us to reiterate that students, all students will have access to um, the appropriate math uh, um, challenge that they're looking for, recognizing we'll have a wide range of needs and that our teachers will be ready to both support students uh, and or push students um, where they're ready to uh, engage in the next level of mathematical learning. Um, and they feel really confident in how they will do that in their sixth grade math classes. Uh, students will move uh, to more advanced topics as they are ready. That is an experience and a practice that our student or our teachers got to engage in this year as they had um, our sixth grade math teachers had two math class levels going on simultaneously and learned very quickly that uh, you know, a student who maybe wasn't in accelerated math this year, but was ready for that next challenge, they were able to give them that next, uh, that next challenge mathematically. And actually we saw students make that jump in a really beautiful way uh, this year. And it also worked the other way. Um, if there were students who needed some reminder of maybe grade level math skills that they needed to refresh in on, they were able to toggle back and forth with that as well. Um, but really with the biggest uh, goal uh, for this move is that we are going to increase access for um, all students to continue to engage in the math uh, learning and the math practices um, and the math experiences that are really going to support them as they move forward um, and still having lots of uh, opportunity to reach some of the highest levels of math that our students have to uh, access in our district. So some things staying the same as have been reiterated, uh, it's been on other slides. Seventh and eighth grade math courses are remaining the same. Uh, so at seventh grade, we would still experience uh, students in grade level math and an accelerated math. Um, all students do complete algebra before they go to high school um, and uh, really working on that stronger foundation for algebra two. Um, uh, as they move on to advanced courses in high school. So it is our uh, plan that sixth grade teachers will recommend students for accelerated math um, and that we are expecting that we will actually see an increase in the number of students accessing accelerated math uh, courses in the future because of their exposure throughout their sixth grade year um, and that uh, we'll be able to uh, differentiate and support uh, a variety, a wider variety of learning differences um, in this model. Now I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Strandy again. All right. Ms. Olson summed it up pretty well um, for some of these points. Also, just a, a reminder, what happens after sixth grade math in the past, um, our fifth grade teachers in our district uh, would recommend students for accelerated math in sixth grade. Uh, now our sixth grade teachers will be doing that, um, recommending some students for seventh grade accelerated math. And a reminder that there are no plans, reason to change seventh and eighth grade math courses. There will be accelerated math classes in those two grades. Um, 
the uh, the new sixth grade course that we have been telling you about is intended to stay in place beyond this coming school year, and we will be working uh, with our teachers and supporting them with professional learning um, to bridge the fifth to sixth grade transition with math, as well as the eighth to ninth grade transition with math. So that concludes all of our slides and information. Um, I believe Mr. Kilstrom now is going to enable the Q&A feature and we can begin taking some questions and do our best to give you some answers. If you have any questions and you wanna go ahead and enter them in that Q&A feature at the, the bottom of your screen, um, we'll do our best to answer as many as we can. So I will start with that um, about how we're ensuring that we will not hold advanced students back. Um, first of all, we know because the teachers who are teaching this new course are very clear because they've been doing this every year in accelerated math of what students need to have to go into accelerated math in seventh grade. So that will not change. Also, in our school district, we have in middle school every year a number of students who actually are a bit faster than the accelerated math course. And we address that. We have had at every school some students who not only complete geometry in eighth grade, but who complete algebra two. And so we are used to that and we work with it depending on the number of students, how we provide the grouping and the learning for them in a variety of ways. And I don't wanna be specific about the, what the exact class would look like, but by having these key algebraic concepts, the course is set up and we actually expect that some students, because even in the traditional accelerated math course, we had students who were going further or faster within that class. Every student in that class was not learning the material at the same rate. But when you move from these pre-algebra to algebra concepts, teachers are very accustomed in sixth grade and actually in seventh grade as well to looking at and pacing students and not just giving them other problems to do, but moving ahead with the concepts into algebra. And I know um, Mr. Eubank um, can probably speak even more specifically to that in terms of the algebra. Yes, thanks, uh, Dr. Soison. And you know, uh, another question that's that's come up in the chat is, you know, what resources or, or curriculum would be using and uh, to support this new course and. I, I guess I would just, you know, again, uh, restate that this is kind of a reimagining of a course that has already existed at our schools. Uh, accelerated math in grade six is something that has drawn on from resources from our texts. Uh, we use the connect connected math program um, for uh, grade six, seven, and eight. And so the teachers um, who are veteran teachers who have been teaching the sixth grade, both regular and accelerated course. Um, for many years, um, we'll continue to draw from those same materials and resources, um, as well as a wealth of, of other resources um, that our teachers have developed over the years that really create those engaging tasks um, and, and problems that allow students to enter in at any level and then really go beyond um, just, just the basics and, and meet those standards uh, that are the accelerated standards as, as well. Um, so just to address a couple of those other concerns as well. The I, okay. curriculum is a series of small booklets and it actually lends itself to this very well because our teachers are accustomed to taking the grade level booklets and having uh, students work with them 
as they're approaching these topics. So this curriculum is designed for this sort of thing, which is why we use it, because it can extend itself six through eighth grade. And then we have and use a high school geometry text. So we will continue uh, using those materials for this course because they are the, the materials that address Algebra 1 and uh, the, the pre-algebra course. Um, I, there's a, a few questions coming in the chat just wondering how, how is it that our teachers are going to be able to navigate, negotiate, uh, supporting such a wide range of learners and ensuring that learners uh, at, at all parts of that spectrum are getting the appropriate challenge. And, um, you know, for sixth grade, again, our sixth grade math teachers have uh, um, taught both the uh, sixth grade math as well as the accelerated. Um, and what uh, this year actually has afforded many teachers is to really build some structures and some instructional practice that helps them be able to uh, make sure that they're meeting the needs of all learners. Um, so in the, um, the way that we had the curriculum lined out and the way that we are looking at which standards and which pieces are gonna be focused on in this sixth grade math, um, we really are looking to see, as uh, Mr. Eubank, Eubank had explained in his slides, where those common through lines are, because our standards have the similar topics, but maybe are uh, a difference between a sixth grade math standard, a seventh grade math standard, and an eighth grade math, stand math standard might just be uh, understanding something and or identifying something, and then it might move to a level of DOK that they're analyzing or creating. For example, let's say a math equation, which was um, an example in the, the math problem that we showed for you. And so because our teachers have really got a chance to, had a chance to dig in this year specifically, but they have done this uh, for years, um, we're really aligning to make sure that those uh, two math courses within one, really, uh, in that sixth grade math experience allows for those opportunities to, okay, every student is starting out with this math problem, but here are the ways that I can keep pushing a more advanced math student that's a math student who is devouring the math and ready to move on to that next level with those extensions that then actually meet those seventh grade standards and beyond. And so we're really intentional about how we organize and structure those learning opportunities to ensure that those next steps to ensure our students who are ready to move on and ready to move quickly will have that challenge. I hope I've answered some of those questions in the chat there around ensuring that students have uh, the appropriate challenge uh, and instruction at their math level. And we appreciate the question about that recognize that this year, you know, that students who were in a class um, where, and especially if it was, um, it sounds like it was an eighth grade student, where because of creating cohorts for students, we did need to have the accelerated and the regular math as one cohort. That is not what this is. And the, the other part is there's a real difference in doing this in sixth grade than in doing this in eighth grade. Because in eighth grade, you have an algebra course and a geometry course. And in sixth grade, what we are doing is looking at moving from what is traditionally in the sixth grade course, pre-algebra concepts, into algebra more quickly and working more with foundational algebra. The reason that we have said uh, several times is that we are not going to do this in seventh and eighth grade is because the standards don't lend themselves to doing that as well, to teach it as one course. So we fully acknowledge that continuing with having two math courses in one would not be something that we are going to do. We believe that we can build a stronger foundation in algebra. And we actually, just prior to the pandemic, had done a high school math renewal where we started looking at how are students doing when they get to high school? That's what we look at. 
and not just at their grades and their test scores, but we look at what courses are they prepared to take so that students can get to calculus and beyond and that they have a foundation so they are not repeating algebra in high school. Sometimes if you just move ahead through the concepts, but you don't have a strong algebra one high school course foundation, it can lead to taking algebra courses again in high school, not advanced algebra, but regular algebra. And we are committed to this, not just for the math curriculum, but it also affects what students are able to take in science. And so that's something that led to this decision that yes, this will be a more accelerated course. If a student completely tops out in this course, again, we have had students who are two years ahead. Sometimes those students might be in a different grade level math course. Sometimes those students are grouped and they work with a teacher Separately, it, it depends on the specific situation with the student, but there is not a limit on the pace or an attempt or any, any motive to keep all of the students together before they move on. And that's something that one of the reasons we're having this presentation, we know it can be confusing because there are some, some places where students all stay at the same level within a math class. And that is intentionally not what we're doing. We are not interrupting or taking away advanced math. We believe from looking at our data and from looking at what we see students need in algebra that the sixth grade course only can be stronger if we actually begin students here. And we have them work with sixth and seventh grade um, concepts together. Dr. Soison, thank you for saying that. I just wanted to reiterate something um, for all families. And that is that, um, again, we have a long history in this district of working with students and families to ensure that they are placed at the appropriate math level and getting the appropriate math challenge that they are ready for. And so um, as Dr. Soison already articulated, but I just wanted to highlight once again, um, and I hopefully, I, I think I can speak confidently for all buildings at the mid-level. Um, we have absolutely uh, had instances where, you know, we get to know a, a math student and we get to know their learning and teachers and families and admin team collaborate to realize, wow, this student really is ready to move on. He, we should be moving them again. Maybe it's a different grade level math class. Um, maybe we're doing some real tailored plans to assure that they're getting uh, the extension and challenge that they're looking for. But um, we have a standing history uh, before even looking at this change um, to assure that we are giving students the appropriate math challenge and uh, opportunities that students and families are looking for and ready for. So I want to assure people that we will always work with you individually to assure that your students getting uh, the math experience that they are ready for. With regard to TAG, um, there is in the fall through our counselors where there is um, teachers write a tag plan for the instruction for a student. And again, if that relates to mathematics, it goes back to what Ms. Olson was just saying, that that's an individualized moving ahead that we do with that student. One thing that we are intentional about in our school district, starting in seventh grade, teachers who are going to be teaching the accelerated uh, concepts have to have adv advanced math credentials. And that means that it's not just, you know, middle school math or K-8 math, but that's because of the need to be able to work with students in their classroom once you reach algebra and go beyond. And that's something that we put in place about uh, eight years ago and recognize that that makes a difference because we are accustomed to, to doing that once students hit actually the seventh grade course and start working um, with algebra concepts.
if anybody wants to speak to, we actually, one of the things about just giving materials and working through self-pacing, um, if someone was interested in maybe checking out the connected math, the CMP3, which is what the, the curriculum is, is called, we would not object to that. It doesn't really lend itself to that. It's not so much practice problems, but that example problem that you saw, there's a series of working through that, prompts from the teachers, feedback, moving further. Um, I know even uh, in high school, when we have our advanced algebra summer courses, they really aren't set up just with practice problems. So that isn't necessarily an approach that, that we would recommend. We also know that sometimes after things like this, you think of questions later. So um, please um, feel free um, to use email um, as, as you know, school has ended. Um, we don't all leave for the summer around here, but also email can be with any of us, you know, to, um, to get in touch with us and ask further questions or have a further conversation if, if you're interested. Dr. Soisson, do we want to, um, with no further questions in there now, do you want to um, say anything before we wrap up tonight or, or any of our other panelists? Anything. So it's, it's always challenging for us in doing this, and we are so glad when we'll be able to see faces again, to not be able to read faces, to see if, if there's something that we think people would still like to hear more about. So again, um, as you think about this information, we are um, glad to speak with you, um, glad to review this, um, this same uh, presentation will be done by the um, leaders at Athey Creek and Rosemont Ridge um, Middle School tomorrow evening. And sometimes, especially as you're thinking about your child, you might want to have a conversation with someone at, at your school. Let's see, I see. Oh, the, to share the data that drove this decision. Um, the data this year to, to do this is actually a lot around the idea that it we're really concerned. We've thought about this for a while, but especially this year with the accuracy of identifying students for the accelerated class. Um, if they were in an online curriculum program, they may have moved through things at a certain pace. The level of um, you know, the investigations materials that students use in fifth grade is a very conceptually driven curriculum. And so it requires a lot more of the, the demonstration of problem solving skills. In doing that, we, we don't want to err on the side of excluding. We also really believe that we can work with students moving, you know, more rapidly and at the, the pace they need to. We have 12 years of data showing that students who actually get into and take more accelerated concepts early do better in high school. And that's percentage data on this measures of academic progress, fall, winter, and spring scores that we have been watching. And national data, um, that I, I, I'm not quite clear on the question. Um, the measures of academic progress is the largest national assessment base in the United States. Um, it's not maybe recognized that way because it is given much more frequently east of the Mississippi River, but it's also the most valid assessment in terms of if this is what it says it's measuring, they have ongoing checkpoints to see. It's also computer adaptive to students and it's more computer adaptive than say the state tests. So students look at their level. It's also matched to specifics, content and um, concepts. And so that's the reason that we've been using it just in mathematics. It goes it, up through algebra 
So we use it in kindergarten through eighth grade. So I, I might be misunderstanding the question, but that's why we use that. And it's considered highly objective, mainly because of the size of the, the sample that they have. Um, students are compared with students all across districts in the United States. You can also compare it by districts with um, similar demographics. And we also do a comparison with students within our own district. Um, this is a good repeated question. The um, it, using IXL is always, you know, anything that practices math fluency and math problem solving. Um, we have not historically given practice in math um, over the summer. So again, that would be something that individually, if there's a concern about your child that I think, you know, talking to someone at Wood or Meridian Creek, um, the answer to that is we will find something for you. <laughs> so um, when we have a conversation with you and, and can get more specific. And, and um, just jumping in quickly, uh, you know, also having worked in another district prior to, to being here, uh, in Weston Wilsonville, um, it's also a good uh, reminder that um, in most districts at the middle school level, um, the advanced math is algebra uh, at eighth grade. Um, you know, that's the that's what students uh, can top out it at while they're in the middle school setting, and so you know, we have um, uh, we have even more. Um, uh, advanced uh, option or ability here. Um, and so the, this one thing that's important is that this, uh, this reconfiguring of, of sixth grade, it is not lowering the ceiling for any student, um, it, not now, or not in their sixth grade year and not in their eighth grade or through high school. Um, all it's doing, doing is providing more ways to reach that ceiling um, for for more students. Um, and then the other, I think really important thing um, that you know our primary school teachers do amazing stuff and they are teaching um, all of the different content areas. And uh, the great thing about middle school is that we have dedicated math teachers um, that that is what they specialize in is math instruction. Um, and so, um, you know, again, that that is a, a huge piece too. That um, they have a dedicated class time and period with um, a professional that has expertise in all areas of math. I think there's been um, a really useful succession of questions about what data was used and why and um, why now. One of the things that repeatedly comes up, and this is not just in the Westland Wilsonville School District, but nationally, is the foundation that students have in algebra. Um, all national data actually linked to high school graduation, linked to the options students have beyond graduation, the successful completion of algebra and having that foundation is key which is why we want to make sure that that's the base course where students have more consistent practice with moving from pre-algebra to algebra, working with operations into working with equations with different number sets, you know, with fractions, with decimals, um, it, with different sizes of numbers, because that's a big move from fifth to sixth grade. Sometimes if students move quickly or have moved quickly through some of those things up to say pre-algebra, working with different operations, but they don't have that really solid foundation in algebra, then in high school, they need to slow down with that. And that's something that we, um, we take most seriously in looking at how do we really provide that foundation? So in looking at, and um, maybe um, Mr. Kilstrom, you can go back to the slide that has um, slide five. Um, 
Yes. And, and kind of looking at how those things in the same colored boxes fit together and how foundational that is. And again, not just for students work in mathematics after middle school, but also in science. And so that's, that's the real focus of, of what we're working on here. And if, if I may just speak to uh, some of the current concerns that have been voiced around, you know, potentially students being left on their own or sort of pulled out of the classroom or perhaps a student that maybe isn't really pushing themselves and so won't get a chance to take on the accelerated curriculum, even though they could really rise to that challenge. Um, the planning team and the teachers that are putting this together are laying out opportunities that all students will have an opportunity to access the accelerated standards within the classroom, within the context of the work and the problems that they are working on. Um, so it wouldn't be the case that, you know, oh, we're going to hold off on teaching the accelerated content until you show us you've demonstrated these skills. All students are going to have the opportunity to be assessed on those skills. And so the, the classroom culture will be around, you know, all students getting access to these opportunities. And the teachers and will be using their expertise, as Mr. King uh, pointed out, you know, these are dedicated math professionals with years and years of experience. Um, and what their focus will be is identifying those students that are meeting the accelerated standards and identifying those students that are still working at grade level and continuing to calibrate their instruction based on the students and the learners in their classroom. And, you know, one thing about this, and this is true of many math classrooms, is that, you know, in a particular unit, some students might really uh, rise to the occasion and meet the accelerated standards and, and really show themselves um, to be, you know, latching on. Maybe it's around, maybe they're really spatial and visual and they latch on to concepts around 3D geometry, whereas maybe they're, they're you know, their algebraic reasoning and building and writing equations isn't as strong. And so we'll see our students have the opportunity to access these different accelerated standards throughout the course of the year um, in such ways that, you know, they're learning together. Um, and it won't be that students will be either withheld from the accelerated curriculum or, you know, put off somewhere else to learn on their own. They are wor working together and our teachers are very experienced at, at setting up different stations to meet the um, ranges of learners in their classrooms aligned with the standards and the learning targets around these topics that, as you can see from this slide, do have quite a bit of overlap. And I hope that that answers or help, helps to illuminate some of those concerns and questions. Again, I see a, a data question. And what we have seen for the past 12 years is we have more than half of the students who show in fifth grade that they are ready for beyond grade level, which is moving beyond just the introductory pre-algebra skills, that they are ready for that. So by working more strongly and deeply with those sixth and seventh grade um, concepts, we can have students actually work with those so that they don't get to seventh grade because sometimes that happens. Students might move rather quickly through some of the operations and what um, Mr. Eubank was describing earlier as some of the, um, the setting up before they get to equations. And then in getting to seventh grade, it sometimes slows down and the idea of wanting to make sure that this foundation that is here is not at all slowing down any individual student. And we explained that we have um, a way to work with that, but the data is the percentage of students who are ready and also the importance of students who really have had that solid foundation when they get to seventh grade so that they then do not need to repeat or to, you know, to go back and especially when they move to high school. So that's the, and we do have, you know, just looking at the patterns of what is it? It's not just a, a say a test score type of data, but what is the thing in common students have who are ready to move further as they get to high school and its successful completion of algebra. What is it that can hinder students? And it's when they get to algebra and in the seventh grade, 
what is the uh, high school algebra course if they are not fully prepared. So sometimes the data is actually what is the actual concept and the pieces that students need to learn. So again, our data in our district um, um, aligns with districts um, nationally with that. And there's the question about looking at the primary level, the answer is yes, we are doing that. There's two units of study um, that students work with more now in fifth grade than they used to. And that's um, actually, Mr. Eubank, you can explain this. I'm thinking of the prime numbers and the rational numbers. And we are in doing this, we are going, we do regular sessions with our fifth grade teachers, also with our ninth grade teachers. We will, you know, we're in the middle. So we want to work with teachers to look at what should they be doing in fifth grade to prepare? What are we finding they're prepared for and what are their strengths? And then the same for our eighth graders going into ninth graders. I would also add that we will be, you know, connecting regularly from our sixth to seventh grade teachers as well, because our seventh grade teachers um, will be receiving all of these students in the next year as well, and calibrating and making sure that the experience that they receive in seventh grade is aligned with what they're doing in sixth grade, but also not a repetition of what they've done in sixth grade as well. We want to continue to push our students forward in their thinking by exposure to new content, but also new tasks and new problems. For those students who are at grade level, um, they're going to want to see some of those topics again, but they would be not presented in the exact same way with the same problems. And that's why that alignment also within our school is, is highly important um, with this as well. And we those conversations have already begun and our, our, our teacher teams are meeting together. At the beginning of the year, the first unit has seventh grade standards in it. So when will they start at the same point, they will start with those seventh grade standards and then students will, you know, within, even within our accelerated course and within our grade level course right now, students are certainly not at all the same, you know, pace and rate. And that's how we look at not only the, the problem sets, but the pace that students work through those concepts with. So, um, you know, in looking at that, yes, they will be starting with a unit that has been designed and it's a mixture of sixth and seventh grade concepts. And students do stay in the same classroom. They work with, they, they use this concept of, of spiraling in math curriculum. So when you look at the standards, in the example on the slide, you'll see that a standard is touched on in sixth grade, picked up on again with more complexity in the seventh grade, and then actually again in the eighth grade. So that's the piece where if you're touching on that standard and a student is ready to move further and faster, they will move towards the seventh and eighth grade spectrum on that standard. But they're working within the same classroom. And as you have seen um, in our schools, when students are in school, they work in groupings in the classroom. We have talked about in designing this, this idea of flexible and fluid groupings. So students need to be working with students at times who are at their same pace. And that's something that our, our teachers will be doing because we expect just as it has been all years that not all students move at exactly the same pace. We're getting close to our, our time we had um, allotted of an hour, um, any, and, and knowing we, we maybe didn't get to every single question, but um, Dr. Swisson, is there anything else we'd like to add or, or maybe reiterate that if folks have uh, questions about their particular student, they can of course reach out to their, their building principal? Yes, please do that because we will talk with you specifically about your student. I see questions here about what about my child? 
and what my child completed this year. And that's something that we'd really want to look individually with you um, at where your child is. Um, and again, our primary classrooms are set up because they also move students in the investigations curriculum with kind of the core concepts, not just all of the activities. And that's what's prepared them. We know that our students historically and for the last 12 years have done well in mathematics. And that certainly starts with what they get in our primary school classrooms. But we'd be glad to speak really in detail um, with you, your principals will about your child. Because we realize there's there's lots of questions in coming to middle school and in, in mathematics. So we'd like to thank you very much um, for joining us. Um, your questions are helpful to us in our communication. And it's um, we actually really look forward to uh, further partnership with you in looking at our math program.